Greetings and salutations everyone! I'm Ekamak, this is Let's Play Tokyo Mirage Sessions Epi Encore. This is the 100th episode! This is my first time ever making a Let's Play that goes for more than 100 episodes. That goes for more than 100 episodes. This is the final area, but we've got a long way to go to the end. So long that I've actually made a special Chris, that I actually made a special discussion to fill the time while we slug our way through all these fights. We insert the floating crystal into the recess. Is this a boss fight? I felt like it should be a boss fight. Looks like the crystal is some kind of key. I sense a dangerous presence up in the sky. What should I do? It's a dragon, you know? But yeah, anyway, um, I w I'm basically applying all of the social link arcana from... So yeah, we have rematches with every major boss in this game and what did Kyria ever do to me? I'm always bringing her in against these bosses with sword attacks. And forgetting that this is a... In fact, I actually forgot that you were even one of these rematch boss fights. It also doesn't tell us his weaknesses, so... Hmm. But yeah, you can see why this is going to be a bit of a time sink. Mabuku Dean. As you can see, the stats have actually gone up quite a bit. I get the feeling though, actually, um, he might not use a sword attack though. That Mabuku Dean does mean that it's not safe to bring Tuma back in, at least. I mean, we know you're weak to lances, it's just we're not going to take advantage of it. The thing is, buddy, if you're gonna spam electric attacks, it's just going to give me a reason to bring in the two highest resistance party members. Oh, there's that sword attack that we're going to have to be really careful about. Wait. Go back, me, and tell me if Tsubasa was actually... Oh, good gravy! Tsubasa! Your defense is lower than Kiria's! What happened to you? It's probably the master classes that I gave them now that I think about it. Huh? <laughs> 
Yeah. Next time Kira's turn comes around, even though it's probably a bad idea, I want to swap her back for Tuma simply so that we can show off old time. We can do it for old time's sake. Tuma, she carries definitely a lot slower than Tsubasa, even though she's a bit tankier. Actually, we probably won't have a reason to use Gaia's Whisper. Let's check this. Let's check this off our list. I get the feeling that he's going to be immune to axe. Granted, because it's at the end of a session when he's in overkill time, it'll probably work anyway. But yes, we're going to have an area to explore and then a boss rematch. Although, I don't actually remember whether we have a rematch directly against Dark Ishiro. Because he actually replaces Yashiro in the rematch against Exilus. Which makes me wonder if Dark Yashiro is just going to be considered as that on there. Oh! Memory has something to say. Oh wait, I should be voicing this. And damn it, I think I just skipped through most of it. Please tell me that I can watch this again. Damn it! Okay! It's a good thing that I saved right before this, huh? So then, it, I'm going to do this again properly. It feels bad to swap them out like this, but uh, what are you going to do? Also, maybe I should put on weapons that... aren't perfectly mastered. Anyhow, since we already know what's going to happen, I can just talk over it. Anyway, last time I finished off discussing the, the, the reason why Barry and Terracino both count as this. Hang on. Whoops. Okay, Barry can be 4.5 and Terracino can be 5. Because I was talking about Hierophant, which is number five. In this episode, we start off with Lovers, number six. This originally represented two paths life that lead to and needing to make a decision. These days, it's more about love and romantic relationships, but it can still be a symbol of finding agreement between an ordinary friend or with the two conflicting elements. Okay, we need Tsukukaja because he has Bufu, or rather, Ma Bufu Beam. The important point here is that Tsubasa almost died to that critical piercing blade.
She wants to can heal herself because she has much Subasa should heal herself because she's the stronger healer. She's the one with the healing expertise X. The thing is that Suba that is Subasa and Tuma are both able to actually do things against this guy and start sessions. Oh, sweet! Another ad lib to add to the list. Anyway, the important thing about lovers is that it isn't always about just love. Usually in Persona, it's the first female party member. Usually, not always. It was Yukari in Persona 3, Risei in Persona 4, and Anne in Persona 5. It's all about the conveyance of emotions and connecting with others. Uh, I put up the Rakugaja so I can put down a Rakunda. <laughs> what do you have against Tsubasa? Right, the problem is Tsubasa is the fastest in the party, so this is basically the party order we're going to see. I really want to do the strike a pose, uh, the raging whisper combo, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yes. But what we can do is empty w Okay, okay, that's important. Axe, he is not immune to. Now the question is, did I kill Subasa by not helping her? Technically no. Honestly, let's just throw it all away here. Higher damage when I'm at lower HP. Well, maybe Subasa can learn it. Lovers is about the conveyance of emotions and connecting with others. And I'm focusing on the personal connections for this list. The important character of that description is another boss, Rinazawa. His model photography is all about a proper connection between the model and the photographer, create a connection between the model and the reader of his books or magazines or whatever. Not getting that out of Subasa is what caused things to go very wrong in his chapter. He was also very obsessed with Maiko to an unhealthy degree, so that was another thing we needed to fix with Subasa learning to model correctly. When we got to Fun Maiko's final side story, we get a proper conclusion to his relationship with her. Wait, no, 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 I don't want to add wind strike. I want to power up Yasha Solo. I'm sad that you won't let me. Please don't! There's never a situation where I want to sacrifice a party member to heal two others when I can simply swap in memory and do it that way. I apparently don't use the killer axe very often. Number 7 is Chariot. This arcana is the symbol of victory, conquest, self-assertion, self-confidence, control, war, and command. And now I need to do this one properly and... Tsubasa can heal herself. Master, it would appear that the final battle is but moments away. Uh, yeah, I'm 
starting to get a little nervous about it. I know. Mr. Troll, I know it might just be I might still be just an inexperienced master, but I want to thank you for fighting alongside me and staying with me through all this. It is I who should be thanking you. If not for you, my life might have ended when I fell under the enemy's spell a second time. You saved me from that fate. Whatever I may do, I will never be able to repay this debt. But I ask that you allow me to fight at your side until the very end. Thank you. Let's do our best then, until it's all over. This will be our final battle. Let's stay vigilant until we see it to the end. Yes, Master. I guess it's just these two. Frick! I just removed something that I've been forgetting to do and still haven't. Whoops. Final battle is at hand. Tuma, prepare yourself. Our ultimate nemesis will be a dire foe indeed. Oh yeah. Hey, don't worry Kane, I'm already hyped and ready. Ah, of course, that's just the kind of person you are. Tuma, despite our hardships, I... I've enjoyed our time together. <laughs> yeah, thanks man. It's been fun for me too. <laughs> this cheerless atmosphere does not suit us. Let us ride on. No hesitation, no surrender. To the very end. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. We charge our enemies herd on, no stopping. Let's do this, Kane! So that I... Indeed. I still haven't promoted Yashiro. So let's deal with that then. I have thought about it and if I promote Yashiro to Swordmaster, then it means that I have an X focused class for every skill type. So as much as I was pleasantly surprised by promoting Mamori into a gen into a berserker instead of a general, and it, uh, although I did say the other times that I'll just help not I'll just help myself out by always promoting top. I think this time I will actually go over the other way. It's tempting. Man, you actually get more speed for going hero than Swordmaster. About three speed. And also we break the 999 health limit. I don't blame the localizers for going for the subtitles rather than dubbing everything over for a game that didn't sell well. Swordmaster has been born. But I always feel like I'm missing... I feel like there's so many little details that we miss out on by not being able to understand their common dialogue. Nevaeh can now use special performance Karma Cut, so something new to add to my list of things we need to see before the end of the game. One or more new carnages has been unlocked through class change. Man, I only got through one I only got through one Valkana before the end of this. This game just isn't something that's easy to you talk about while you're gaming. Right, we want this one because we want his stronger strike skills. 
Sure, we can use more. Oreno Kenji. Missed it. Okay then, so... Arcana 7 is Chariot. This Arcana is a symbol of victory, conquest, self-assertion, self-confidence, control, war, and command. What's gonna happen when I get to... Plus, when I get to plus 9 and upgrade it again? Will I get a plus 10? I don't know, anyway. Characters of the Chariot Arcana are driven individuals. With a personal goal they aim to, they aim to achieve at any cost. Often short tempered or aggressive. That actually sounds a bit like Yashiro. Huh. In Persona 3, there were two Chariot uh, characters. There was Kazushi Miyamoto, the sports club member of the same club the protagonist picked. And there was Igus. Kazushi is all about being the champion of whatever sport you chose to involve yourself in because of the deal he made with his nephew. Even if it means he's going to lose the use of his leg for the rest of his life, he is going to win that championship. And you very... as much as you'd need to, yeah, you talk him out of it. I guess is, well, her hyperfocus is killing shadows. That's basically what her identity is until very late in the game. She sees herself as a machine with only the purpose of shadow slaying. And she's very driven to kill those full moon shadows that are, her that are causing so much trouble for everyone. Chie Satanaka is the Persona 4 Chariot Arcana. She's very driven to stamp out wrongdoing, but she's got a bad case of tunnel, of tunnel vision. She'll vent her anger on people that don't deserve it alongside those that do. It explains why the Chariot and Justice Full Moon Arcanas had to be a team. One without the other is far less useful. Persona 5 has Ryuji as the Chariot Arcana. Uh, Okay, there's the problem. We either don't have the arcana, we do either don't have the arcana to fuse it, or we don't have it if leveled enough, which I suppose is better than what you normally get. Anyway, Ryuji Sakamoto. He likewise had problems with retaliating in the wrong way. If you remember the stuff that happened with him for Kamoshida is that yes, Kamoshida was an awful person and he did deserve to be called out, but the way that Ryuji went about it made it possible for Kamoshida to get what he wanted. He was able to shut down the sports club that was overshadowing his. Alright, Shockwave. This is actually kind of an interesting ability. Did I skip over the ability to look at it? Knocks down all nearby enemies. So the next time I get one of those shadow ambushes, if I'm fast enough to pause, I can use that ability to get out of it. But often they'll be catching me off guard as much as the party. Also, <laughs> I shall treasure our meeting, Itsuki. But do not let your successes and experience go to your head. Perhaps I need not worry. I vocalized that very much wrong, but I don't care. The thing is, the upside to the whole thing with the Phantom Thieves with the, or rather the thing with Ryuji is that the Phantom Thieves gives him a much more productive way to channel all that energy, mainly into getting at them. In, but because the Phantom Thieves had that code, didn't they? It's you can't. We all have to agree before we go after someone. Uh, I did not see your request the last time I passed. Whoops. 
Uh, hey, thanks for the help last time. I got another favor to ask of you. Can you help me out? Yori can't stop falling in love. Cool, thanks. Let's talk later at the same spot. I need to calm down a bit. It'll give us something to do. Anyhow, all of that said, who matches the Chariot Arcana in Tokyo Mirage Sessions? Tuma sounds like a good pick, he's the sort of hot-headed person that fits into the Ryuji and Chiris archetype. But no, actually I think Eleonora is my choice for this one. It's... <laughs> oh boy. Here's the thing. Her character is driven by finding a place to belong. Hollywood. Everything she did was to become a Hollywood star. When she gets to her second side story, we actually need to dedicate her third side story to re-examining all her choices and to figure out if it's exactly what she wants. She was so busy working hard to get there that she realized she didn't know if it was something she truly wanted or not. So Chariot Arcana for oh. Ellie. Okay, I'm calm now. Alright, let's get down to business. So, I fell in love again with, uh, in love again with another non-human. I'm a gonna slap you! Speechless? Yeah, I know. Get used to it already. I mean, it's the third time. Has this really happened three times? It's more or less the same as last time. Somehow wandered into a world on the other side of that weird gate. I met her in a strange world with floating islands. A non-human girl who was looking somberly down at the ruins below. So, my request is simple. I want to talk with her again. Thanks, man. I'm counting on ya. Uh, sigh. And unfortunately, I can't rant about this quite as much as Ayaha because Ayaha, we got a lot of side quests with Ayaha, and it just illustrates how squandered her potential was. With Yori, it's just annoying. I need to prepare, I need to get ready for Comedy Coliseum, but... Yeah, you do that. Uh, oh dear, I just looked at what I wrote for the Justice Arcana. That's definitely more than two minutes worth of dialogue, whoops. So, yeah, shorter... Shorter discussion today, but mainly because I had a boss fight and... It's Tokyo Mirage Sessions. It's of the same people who made the Persona games and SMT games, and based off of the people who made Fire Emblem games, of course it's going to be hard. If you're distracted, you die. So, next time we continue my little talk about all the different abilities for the game. I mean, all the different ways we can apply characters to Social Link Arcana. And we continue further into Illusory Door. Until next time guys, take care, I'll see you all around. Also I should probably set the cast back to... Kyria and Ellie, because even though they don't always get sessions off each other, we need to get them to stage rank 20. It would be awful if we got to the final boss and we didn't. Either way, until next time guys, take care, we'll see you all around. Now this music, this is definitely last area music.